Nicole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in weight loss, mindset, and business. Learn our top tips to set you up for success so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, and feel unstoppable. As a licensed doctor of chiropractic, expert in functional medicine and exercise, his functional nutrition practice is natural healthcare solutions. Promoting wellness is his mission. Dr. Justin Marcajani in the house. Hey, Lisa. Oh. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be part of your summit. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Thank the you. timing is always perfect. And I awesome. want to just jump right into it and give our audience some awesome, unstoppable tips. So let's just start with um, the immune system. I want to know, how can we stay unstoppable in our immune system no matter what? Well, so our immune system is, is a conglomeration of a bunch of systems working together, right? People just think of their immune system as white blood cells, right? And they're kind of going out and they're looking for invaders, whether it's bacteria or a virus, right? We have all the coronavirus craziness, whether it's different viruses like that or infections or parasites. But really, you have your immune system, which are your various immune cells, right? Your Th1, Th2, your Th1 are like your, your natural killers. Like it's the special forces that get in there and start attacking things right away. And then the Th2 is kind of the backup. Those are the antibodies that come later on. So that's kind of one aspect of it. But right. then just having healthy gut function, that's where 80% of your immune system lives. So having healthy digestion and gut function makes a huge role. Having healthy hormones, because your hormones help with inflammation and stress and repair. And then of course, you know, all of the nutrients to run your brain, dopamine and serotonin and GABA and all of our sleep hormones come from our gut and our hormones also help that. So you can see hormones play a role, gut plays a role, uh, our neurotransmitters play a role. Also, our detoxification plays a role because if we don't methylate, if we don't, let's say, expel toxins out of our body, those toxins can stress out our immune system. So immune system is kind of like a fallacy. We have our, our body systems, and when they all function together, we have really strong immunity overall. Does that make sense? Oh, so we have to look at everything, everything kind of together as a system, right. not in isolation. I love the holistic viewpoint, and absolutely for me, I know my – Brain hormones get boosted a lot by exercise, but I want to know what tips do you have for our audience about boosting their gut health? Yeah, so the first thing is it's always going to come down to food. So first, nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory, low-toxin food. So I'm a big fan of like a paleo template, a whole food kind of paleo template where you have, you know um, – carbohydrates that are going to be high quality plant-based carbohydrates, ideally keeping the grains and the more inflammatory carbs down, dialing in the carbs for your needs. So if you're really active and you're already lean and pretty healthy, you could probably do more carbs. And if you're less healthy or, or more sedentary, then you probably lean more on vegetables and less fruit and starch. And then we dial in your protein from you know high quality animal sources, whether it's fish, chicken, beef, grass fed, try to be more organic as possible because of the, the toxins and the chemicals and the hormones that could be in your animal products. And ideally you want to dial it in with a good healthcare provider, functional medicine, functional nutrition person to kind of dial it in. But that kind of gives you a really good idea. Nutrient dense, anti-inflammatory, low toxin. Thank you. And I know there's um, certain uh, supplements that we could talk about too real mm -hmm. um, briefly mm -hmm. if you want to hit upon that. I know um, like vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D. Um, You're talking for the immune system? But yeah. Well, let's stay on the immune system just yeah. a few more minutes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So overall, I kind of like break up like new, like support for the immune system for um, the nutrient side. And then we have like the herbal or medicinal mushroom side. Okay. Right. So first we're going to have like a lot of our key fat soluble vitamins, right? Vitamin A and D are going to be vi very important. Vitamin A is going to help with strong epithelial barrier. Very important, right? Viruses tend to have to break to that cell membrane and healthier cell membranes make it harder for viruses to kind of get in there and replicate. So vitamin A is going to be very important. We can get this from cod liver oil, high quality, you know, liver support. You know, some good immune supports may have like um, uh, retinoic acid or such from, 
vitamin A concentrate as an option as well to kind of get your vitamin A levels up. Obviously, egg yolks are really good too. And then the vitamin D side, we can obviously do it with sunlight and such, but certain times of the year, it may not be effective. So we may do a good high quality vitamin D3 support. You know, 5,000 I use a day is a good general dose. And then you can always go a little bit higher, but you want to you want to make sure you're testing that over time so you don't go too high. So vitamin A and D, we can also throw in um, zinc in there is really important. That helps with killing bacteria and keeping a strong immune system. And we can also go after glutathione and N-acetylcysteine, which kind of helps with glutathione. That helps with our redox pathway. So redox is like our body's ability to stabilize inflammation and give off electrons to stabilize cells. So in the lungs, when we have inflammation, glutathione really helps calm down inflammation in the lungs. And then we can also throw vitamin C in there, which kind of plugs into those same kind of pathways, helps with oxidative stress, helps with inflammation. And um, let's say it, like, keeping blood sugar under control. High levels of insulin from too much carbohydrates is going to decrease your body's ability to um, use its natural pack men and pack women called phagocytes, right. which is your, your immune cells being able to gobble up viruses or bacteria. It's going to decrease that ability to gobble that stuff up. So when we have high levels of insulin and inflammation, that's going to be thwarted. And that's kind of the nutrient side. On the herbal side, we have things like astragalus, which really help with decreasing viral replication. We have things like medicinal mushrooms like reishi, organoderma lucidum, which help with the immune function, help boost natural killer cells. We have things like andrographis or I mentioned astragalus, which are more adaptogenic as well. You can kind of put echinacea in that camp as well. You could put high quality of nano silver in that camp. Um, those are all very, very helpful and very um, immune supporting. Thanks, Dr. Jay. You are the wealth yeah. of, of information on it, keeping yeah. your immune system strong. I only have a couple more questions on that topic. And then I just yeah. want to finish with one of my favorite topics of managing stress and is stress good or bad. But for me, um, keeping my immune system strong, I'm really into um, it to intermittent fasting these days. And I'm wondering um, your thoughts on strengthening, um, lessening inflammation and strengthening the white blood cells with um, intermittent fasting? Yeah, great question. So just like exercise, that's a stress on your body. You know, you're a trainer, you understand that. And you're trying to dial that stress into someone so their body can adapt and then heal a little bit better, heal a little bit stronger from that stress. So just like you would dial in exercise according to your, to your client's needs, you're going to dial in intermittent fasting according to your client's needs. And if they're, if they're stressed, if they're inflamed, if they have hormone issues, that may be too much of a stressor to, to throw right. in. So we, we may work on stabilizing blood sugar, getting diet dialed in, getting some movement in. And as they get healthier with their thyroid, with their hormones, with their PMS, with their hot flashes, with their blood sugar swings and mood issues, then we may start to add that in. We may start to lean on like a 16 by eight. The bigger number is the fasting number. So that may be like, hey, we're going to stop eating like at seven o'clock at night and we won't eat again until one or two o'clock in the afternoon. We have like a little bit late lunch and then we eat again maybe around five or six o'clock. Uh, again, you, if you're doing two meals like that, the feeding window is compressed. So those two meals have to be really good. They have to be right. a lot of extra servings of vegetables, maybe a bigger serving of protein, you know, in that meal. And maybe you need to make sure you have enough time to eat and you're not stressed, maybe taking some digestive support. Oh, absolutely. So if you need 2,500 calories of whole food nutrients there, you know, your, your meal has to go up to about 12 and a half thousand calories where maybe it could have been eight. Does that make sense? Oh, I hear you. And thank you, you so much for, for bringing up the importance of obviously not everybody's going to have the same program for the same problems and, and how important it is that it's individualized. And then I just for the final question, um, I just wanted to talk about stress and is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? And I know we all feel stress, but I just wanted your um, expert Dr. J opinion. Yeah. So stress. So in, in the literature, there's something called allostatic load. Allostatic load is basically, imagine that as like your stress bucket. And the bigger your bucket is, or the more empty your bucket is, the more stressors you can put in that bucket. Imagine each stressor as like a stress ball, you put it in that bucket. As long as the bucket's not overflowing, you're not going to have any problems. You're going to be able to adapt to stress. That's a good thing. But as soon as that bucket's already overflowing, then that next stressor that, that causes that bucket to start overflowing, that's going to be too much. 
your right. system's going to start breaking down, whether it's fatigue or mood issues or digestive issues, inability to repair or recover, or just feeling sore or more tired and more painful yeah. after workouts. So it's all about kind of having someone really assess your allostatic load, your stress bucket, and then just really making sure they're doing their best to pull stress balls out of their bucket before they <laughs> add things in. So make sure you kind of equilibrium, you know, try to reach equilibrium first, pull things out before you start adding things in. But it is powerful. Your body adapts to stress. You just want to make sure there's enough resilience and, and adaptation capacity in the tank first. Okay. And the final, um, final, final, I'm going to say, do you have anything you want to leave our audience with on hacks for managing their hormones or inflammation? Yeah. So off the bat, I see patients all over the world. I see patients online at justinhelp.com. So I have a lot of podcasts and video stuff there that, that would, let's just say, further this conversation. So that's a good reference, number one. Number two, I always say diet is like the first thing we, we highlight because we have to have the building blocks there. The building blocks come from your food, but it's not just a guarantee where you, you put it in your mouth and you got it. So you got to one, put it in your mouth, chew it, and then you have to digest it. So one, choosing the right foods. We talked about nutrient density, anti-inflammatory, low toxin. I think a good paleo template is a good first start. We adjust the macros accordingly. Second, we have to make sure we're digesting our nutrients. So if we have an infection or we have low stomach acid or enzyme levels, we have to work on that so we can break our food down, chewing our food up well. We may have to dive in deeper to make sure we don't have an infection because that could be throwing off our digestion. And then if we have an unresolved thyroid issue or a lot of adrenal stress or we have a lot of cycle issue, if we're a, a, a cycling woman and we have a lot of PMS or hormonal symptoms, we have to work on balancing that. Now, some of the things I mentioned can help, but it takes a while. So it's good to come in there with functional medicine protocols to, to bump it up faster. Same thing if you're menopausal and you have a lot of hot flashes or mood issues or skin issues, we have to fix that. Same thing if you're thyroid, if you have Hashimoto's or an autoimmune thyroid. So we kind of have to come in there and kind of massage some of these hormonal systems depending on how good or bad they are. Um, but um, I think your question was, I want to just highlight. So talking about dealing with stress, right? That was the key question. Well, it was stress. I just didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to throw in um, as far as like the hormones and the stress. Yes. Yeah. So the, so the hormones and the stress are all the same thing because your hormones respond to stress. So yes. So the food component, number one, look at the hormone systems because those are how your body deals with stress. So on the adrenals, we're looking at cortisol and adrenaline. On the female hormone side, we're going to be looking at estrogen, progesterone, and those ratios. And a thyroid, we'll be looking at thyroid hormone T4 and T3. And those are really important. If we see imbalances in that little triangle there, we want to we want to work on that. And then the gut, if we have infections or digestive issues, we want to support that too. So we want to look at everything holistically from a system standpoint and the symptoms of stress, whether it's mood or sleep or anxiety, are all happen down below. So we want to go above, below, inside out. Does that help? Totally. Thanks for bringing yeah. it about full circle to the whole holistic plan. Yeah. I love that. And where can people find you? Yeah, I'm, I'm available. I'm at justinhealth.com, J-U-S-T-I-N-H-E-A-L-T-H.com. I have a podcast and a YouTube channel there. I see patients all over the world you know, doing the things that I've talked about in this, in this philosophy here today. Thanks, Dr. J. Appreciate you. Thanks so much, Lisa. I appreciate it. by Good Pods. Protein shakes are messy, expensive, and hard to make. Good Pod is a new amazing shake maker that's a blender and a pod in one. Pick a pod, fill your glass with water or milk in 60 seconds or less. You have a healthy protein shake and ready to drink. Just like that.